All right, all right. Okay, I'm very excited to be with you guys here tonight um, to, to talk on goal setting. And um, those of you who've been through goal setting um, classes or seminars know that there's all sorts of angles you can take um, for goal setting. And um, so that was the challenge was, what's the best way to come at this? You know, what's the best way to um, make sure that in a 45 minute time, I give you all the information you really, really need to get started? Well, you know, you could spend a whole seven, eight hours on goal setting. Um, and we, we, we weren't going to do that. Let me just mute. Sorry. Okay. Um, on goal setting. So, I'm first I want to take about the first um, probably 50 60 percent of the time and just talk about some of the principles and mindset around goal setting and then we're going to go, get into specifics about doing it for your business um, and, and leave you with some action plan so I started by asking you guys um, to consider some questions what do I want to do what do I want to be what do I want to see what do I want to have and where do I want to go and that's because that gives you sort of the big picture of, of what life could look like for you in three years, in five years, in 10 years. We all have to have a picture of what things are going to look like down the road. Um, what you need to make sure is as you do it free flow, free flow, like Leanne said in, in uh, mindset, set goals like a four-year-old because four-year-olds believe, believe they can do anything, right? They're going to be a fireman and they're going to be a doctor and they're going to be a dentist and maybe they're going to drive trucks because they believe they can do everything. So set your goals. It's kind of like a, a four-year-old, but your goals also need to be some short-term, some mid-term, some longer-term. They need to be six-month goals or have to be some for a year. And the reason for that is that in order to really succeed in setting your goals, if your goal, if you set your goal and you say, okay, my big goal is to pay off my mortgage and you're 35 years old and you owe 200,000 on your mortgage, well, clearly setting a goal to pay off your mortgage isn't going to cultivate the madness that you need to really go after that goal. Because you're going to say, well, instead of 25 years, that's in, that's the plan I've set up with the bank. I'd really like to pay it off in 15. Well, 15 years is too long to cultivate the madness you need on your day-to-day -day activity to succeed. So you have to have shorter term goals. You'd have to break that mortgage down to where would I like to see it in five years? And where would I like to see it in three years? Uh, so as you do your goal setting, the goal setting helps you to establish in this moment what are your values? What are your pillars that you are the most concerned about? I can tell you that when I was going through a, a business lawsuit a few years ago and I was moving into Plexus and um, of course, not long after my husband passed away, my biggest concern was finances, was making sure that I was set up for retirement. That was 100% where my focus was. So if I were to answer these questions, what do I want to do? I want to pay off my mortgage. What do I want to be? I want to be debt free. What do I want to see? I want to see my mortgage say zero owing on it. You know, that I would have answered a lot of those questions would have come back to what it would have been the number one critical um, goal that I had at that time. And so it helps you to know where you're likely going to be putting a lot of your focus um, in the next little while. So basically, we have a few areas. We have health and fitness. We have finances. We have family and relationships. Cindy, are you letting people in? Oh, okay. Um, family relationships, spiritual, personal growth. Um, th there's only a few areas that you're likely that you're likely going to be addressing. Um, so you start with those long-term goals. Then you've got to focus it in. I'm just. For some reason, Christina was just sitting there and I, I know you probably let her in a couple of times, but it wasn't going in. So um, so what what we want to do is take those big goals and we want to um, sort of get them to the forefront of your consciousness. And you can't do that until you get some smaller goals. One of the rules, you know, we always say things like your goal, your why has to make you cry. The reason you're doing this has to make you cry. But really, the why has to be something you needed yesterday. The goal had to be something you needed last week. 
um, last month, last year, because you can't cultivate the madness in something that you can't, you don't even really need for a year or two. So think, so really when you're thinking about goal setting, um, there are a lot of things in our life we needed yesterday. You know, if we're under financial pressure, we needed that fixed yesterday. Um, so start clarifying um, some of these short-term goals, the goals that make you really, really hungry. Um, you want to find that place in your soul that really allows you to dream big. And I'm going to tell you that when I, years ago, you know, when I started Plexus nine years ago, and then eight years ago, as I was building my business and Rick passed away, um, for a long time, my goal was to retire my husband. So some of you know my story from way back when I was in Melaleuca. In fact, way back, now I'm showing my age, but my goal was retire Rick in 1999. So his password on the network of the computer was retire 99. All his staff had to type in retire 99 because he wanted all of them to have the same energy to get him retired. My husband retired on December the 30th, 1999. And that had been written. That's what we shared. Everybody knew that he was going to retire in 1999. In 1999, he sold his, his practice. Um, that was our, that was our big goal. Um, and then then my goal after that was uh, to really make sure we were set up for financial, for, for retirement. So what happened to me is I didn't do any goal re reconstruction surgery after that. When I reached the goal, when I, Rick had passed away and I was making good money, I never set new goals. And uh, I didn't really think about it. I, I celebrated where I was at. I celebrated the fact that I had achieved these goals. I'd paid off my mortgage. I had, you know, I had good money coming in and I allowed my business to slip. And I've been transparent with all of you. I let my business slip be below Emerald. Um, I had two businesses, so I was very fortunate. Um, so I had good income coming in, but I didn't create new goals. And so that was something I really had to work at because I wasn't hungry to take my business to Sapphire and Diamond. Um, so that was something I worked on. So you have to get inside and really figure out what do you really want? Because you have to be hungry to get that. Um, you all have a protective mechanism, that negative reflection that says, I can't do it. It's too big for me. Um, and you have to really resist the temptation of listening to that. It's natural. It's your protective mechanism. It's preventing you from hurting. After all, if I don't really start, I don't really fail. If I don't really try, I haven't really failed. And you've got to get past that, get back to that four-year-old who doesn't see it as a failure if they don't reach their goals in, the, in their time frame. Um, so Noah St. James, I just want you to think about this as you are leaders building a team. Noah St. James, who wrote a book um, that, oh, now I'm just, for a moment, I've just lost the name of the book. Um, it was a book that all the jewels read a few years ago. I loved, love, love that book. And, and I recall a number of the things he said. But he said that there are three goals that reasons are not met. Um, and, and really everything falls into these three goals. One is you don't really want it badly enough. How many of you have had team members, you say to them, what are your goals? And sort of, it's like they're pulling it out of a hat and they say, I wanna be senior Ruby in April. And they have no, so you, the next step, next question is, so, so tell me about your team members. So what are their goals? If you want to be senior Ruby in April, and right now you're sitting as a senior silver, and you want to be senior Ruby in April. So talk to me about your team and where they're at and who's got goals. And, and why, wh where did April come from? How did you break that out? And they said, I don't know. I, April is like the beginning of spring. And I like what it says on the income disclosure. I like the amount you get at senior Ruby, you know, 50,000 US a year. That's pretty good money. I kind of like that. There's no real connection with that, with that goal. It's just pulled out of thin air. Um, it would be nice to have that extra money every month. So that's not a goal that's likely going to be achieved. It's just not something they really want. They're just giving you something and it doesn't, there's no attachment to it. So it's something they don't really want, or they set something that's impossible. So you ask somebody in the middle of the month, so what's your goal for the month? And they say, I want to enroll six people. And they've never enrolled more than three in a month. And it's halfway through the month and they say they're going to enroll six. It's not completely impossible, that example I just gave, but it's not really likely. So the next question is, so what do you have in place? 
to ensure you could do six people this month? Tell me what strategies you've put in place to make that happen. It's our job to help people be realistic with their goal setting. They can't just be pulling th something out of thin air. There's got to be some activity that backs up the likelihood that this goal can be met. Um, guess what the third thing is that Noah St. James talks about? And, and I think it's really, this is like something I need to work on so badly. Those of you who know me know that I don't really have goal-free time in my day or goal-free zones, meaning the time of the day that you are not connected to your business at all. You're not connected to your goals at all. The time you take to just completely decompress. Some of you are really good. You do your devotions in the morning or you do your yoga or you go for a walk. Maura does a lot of her little communication when she's been out on a nice walk. You, you disconnect. So one of the three reasons people don't meet their goals is it's too chaotic. They are so focused on working. They are so focused on goal setting and they never take the time during the day to refresh and revitalize because our brain needs that time for creativity, not on Netflix. And you know, people who say to you, oh my gosh, I'm just working all the time. Well, what they likely mean is the phone is in the hand all the time. They're not working all the time. You are far more productive in working in 60 minutes, maximum 90 minute sprints and then taking 15 to 30 minutes to walk away. Leave your phone, leave your computer, go for a little walk, go lay in the sun, do, do something that revitalizes you, do your yoga, go close your eyes and just do some gratitude and some visualization, but something that disconnects you. It's really, really important that you do that. It's something I am very poor at doing, but I'm. it's now in my new calendar. I was saying to a couple of people earlier this morning, I, my, I have filled my calendar with some really important activities because I've set some goals, which I'll share with you guys shortly. Um, but I had it in my calendar when I was putting my exercise in my calendar yesterday that at 4 p.m. today, Jim and I would leave to do about a 20 kilometer bike ride. And at five to four, I had my cycling stuff on and I was ready to go biking because it was in the calendar. And, um, and, I, I, and it's funny when you get out there and you're in the sunshine and you're watching people golf and all the stuff that's going on, you can disconnect. So you need to do that. So I'm going to give you an analogy, and I love this analogy, and I want you to, um, hopefully you'll appreciate what this is about. So when people are setting goals, um, most often we sabotage ourselves, right? The goal, it, I think we would all agree that if you look at the people that are diamonds and plexus, they're not smarter than you. They're not more charismatic than, than you are. They may not even be as good at the business as you are but they do have some things that they do a lot better and they control their thoughts and they control their activity. So I'm gonna give you an analogy. When a rocket ship leaves earth, it has to first surpass gravity and break through the atmosphere. So we're gonna, in this analogy, gravity is your habits of thoughts and your habits of activity. Okay, so if you got in the habit of saying things like, oh, I can't do that, or my team doesn't like to do that, or I don't like to be held accountable because that just puts too much pressure on me, or I, you know, those scripts don't work for me, or you, you give all this stuff. Those habits of thoughts are destroying your business. That is the gravity that's sitting on you hot and heavy and not allowing you to break through into the atmosphere. Um, it's something that you have to work on and hopefully you have somebody in your support team that can kindly share with you that you don't even realize because people don't realize often that the things that they say are creating the reality of where they are right now. They don't realize that things that they say are bringing in this unproductive or negative energy because our words, our thoughts and our words do create our reality. And so saying things like, oh, none of my people are interested in this. And you know that kind of talk, you attract that just in the way that you speak. So understand that your habits of thoughts um, and your habits of activity. So if your habit of activity is you show up for IPAs 
Um, you show up for power 30, um, but you're distracted and you're only doing one activity. You don't do any of the reach outs or um, you spend your time scrolling in the news feed in on Facebook, but you're not really doing your reach outs. The value of doing things like power hours that your activity is very focused. You have very, very focused activity. And guess what? If you listen to a lot of the diamonds in this company who were working full time and had kids, they only had, they would find, they would, they would um, protect 60 minutes a day to build their business. Now it might not be 60 minutes straight. It might be 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes and 15 minutes, but they protect that time and they get their IPAs done. Not just Monday and Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because they have big dreams and they're written down and they know where they're going. So you're gonna, your, your gravity are your habits of thought and your habits of activity. What do you need to change? I'm going to tell you, instead of going in the, the right direction with my weight loss, I was going in the other direction because I had really bad habits of thoughts and habits of activity when, as it related around me and my own personal health. And then it starts to affect your business. You don't want to you don't want to present yourself in front of people because you're thinking, what are they going to think here? I'm in a health and wellness business and I'm not doing the things that I should be doing. And you start to allow it to sabotage. And so until you decide to take charge of some of those things, um, you're never going to move in the direction you need to go in. And I know that. Um, so the, at, the environment now is the atmosphere. We have gravity and we have the environment. We have to break through the atmosphere. What's that? We have to break through our comfort zone. We have to break through our comfort zone and we have to allow ourselves to succeed. We have to do the things that we don't want to do in order to succeed. Otherwise, I'm going to tell you, you're going to build the way I've been building a lot. That doesn't mean you don't, you're not going to succeed, but you're going to do it through chaos. You're going to be a reactor. You're going to be addressing things as they come instead of having things in the calendar and organized. You don't have to respond to everybody immediately. And I know I'm very guilty. I'm going to respond faster than almost anybody. That's just who I am. But I need to protect that a little bit more for myself and put things in the schedule. This is when I do this part of my business. This is when I do this part of my business um, and have things scheduled out and have my unplugged time, which is now in my calendar, guilt-free, unplugged time. And if somebody says, hey, I have a three-way at four o'clock today. And it actually did happen. Somebody wondered if I could do something. I said, I'm sorry, I have something already in my schedule. They don't need to know that it's going on a bike ride because that's the time I have scheduled to do that. Um, it's really important. Um, when somebody says to you um, that they're working all the time or they have no time, or um, you know, I don't get home from work till this time and then I have to feed the kids and blah, blah, blah. What they're saying to you is this is not a priority. They don't say it exactly that way. They might not even consciously really know that that's what they're thinking, but that's what they're telling you. Now you need to know that you need to address it with them, bless and release them if that's the way it's gonna be, because for, for some, that's just gonna be the way it is. It's not at this moment, their priority. It'll be less frustrating to you and less frustrating for them if you can just bless and release them with that. When it becomes a priority, you're gonna find the time because you can you can find 15 minutes here and there. For sure, you're finding time to get on TV and watch a little bit of TV. And maybe it's a time when you say to them, you need to speak with the shareholders in your house. You need to have conversation with your children. You need to have conversation with your spouse, get their buy-in on your goals so that they buy in on the sacrifices that have to be made. Many of you know that when my kids were little, I copied something that Arlene Wilcox taught me many, many years ago. And that is when the kids, when my kids were little, I let them go through back in the old days, shows my age again, there was something called Consumers Magazine. Um, and I let them go in there and pick whatever toy they wanted. And if it was a $39 toy, then that meant mommy had to be out 39 times or do 39 conference calls where they didn't have my attention because for each time I did that, they got a loony that went in the envelope, which was taped on their door and we would knock off one more dollar, one more dollar. They became invested in me doing these things. And guess what? Guess what they said every day? Mommy, are you doing a meeting tonight? Do you have a meeting to do? Do you have a call to do tonight? Because they were counting down how many more loonies they needed to buy their present. So I made them, they invested in my goals 
because I gave them, they became partners, kind of like your team members do. They became partners. Okay. Um, so most people are going to fall into two areas um, when it comes to goal setting. They're going to be victims or they're going to be slaves. Now, we don't want to be either of those. We need to be somewhere in the middle. But let's talk about this just for a minute. Victim or slave. A victim is the person who says, well, I don't really like setting goals. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to do everything I can. I promise you I'm going to do that. But I'm not, I'm not somebody who wants to put that in paper. I don't want a coaching call with you regularly and have to be accountable to things. They're the person who, um, you know, they'll say, and they'll also say, oh, if I don't hit it this month, I'll do it next month they're already giving themselves permission to not succeed. If I don't do it this month, I'll do it next month. Um, they're not taking control of gravity or atmosphere in any way. I'll just do my best. Um, I'm gonna tell you something. Nobody operates to, the, to diamond with this kind of mentality. You have to be uncomfortable. You have to, I mean, when I go through my calls with my coach and he holds me accountable to the things I said the month before I was going to do. And then he goes through the checklist to see, did I do the number of enrollments and how many three ways did I do and all of those things. Um, or if somebody says, sorry, I missed the call because somebody stopped in um, and they, they had, I had an unexpected visitor or it was dinner time. Got to love that one. Really, it's dinner time. You can't do dinner and at another time. You got to do dinner right at that time. I was, I got, I got delayed on a call with a customer and that's really important because that's my customer. People will have the most messed up priorities if they really want to build their business. Um, so we need to help people, um, on, you know, correct those misguided priorities if they're building a business. Um, they're also the ones often these victims who try to find sidelines to complain to to partner with, to see if they align their, their own kind of negative thinking. It could be they've had, a, you know, they're a little disgruntled with something their coach or mentor told them, and now they're going to find a sideline and see if they can kind of partner up and, and chat about why, you know, why she seems to be so hard on me, or um, they'll, they're the ones who are going to be complaining when things aren't going right, or something with the website goes wrong. They're likely those people, they play the victim a lot, and they don't even know it. They actually might think they're the opposite. But, you know, as a mentor and upline, you, you'll be able to watch that. Then there's the other extreme, the slave. The slave who, can, who feels devastated when they miss their goal. The person who did it all, they laid it all out. They said, I couldn't have done any more. And they're devastated and they're ready to quit. That's not good either, right? They, they regardless of where you sit in your goal setting, the one healthy reaction you have at the end of the month is, I did do my best. I did everything I could do and it didn't happen. So what could I do differently this month? What do I have to do to be more of a leader? What do I have to do to be a better support to my team? What part of the system is my team not really plugging into? Um, what, what, how can I change the way I'm communicating with them or the events I'm putting in place? But we, you always want to assess and, and see what you could do differently. You're, you're not defined by the goal you did reach or did not reach in any given month. It's, it's just, uh, you know, you have to have a goal that you're reaching for when you don't hit the goal, which guess what? If you're setting bodacious, big, hairy goals, you're not gonna hit them a lot of the time, but you're gonna be closer to them than you would have had had you not hit it. That's the way it is. I don't know if Rebecca, because Rebecca's on the yacht in St. Martin, but she set a goal that she wanted to be Emerald last year by July because she wanted to earn the Mexico trip. She didn't make it by July and she didn't earn Mexico, but she made it in August. And as soon as she made it in August, gave her automatic qualification to Hawaii this year. You know, there's always a bright side to it. So what, if she hadn't set the goal for July, she might not have hit it till December. It doesn't matter. You just set the goal and you get to work. Um, so really important. You can't have healthy drive without healthy margins to unplug, guys. So everybody put that in your schedule as well, whatever that is for you. Um, here's the bottom line. If you want to be successful, what, other, what the, the expression really is, if you want to be rich and successful, you cannot be normal. 
You can't be normal because by definition, normal is not successful. Otherwise we'd have a whole world of successful people. Instead, we have a whole population of people who live paycheck to paycheck, month after month, year after year for their entire life. That's the way they live. So if you don't want that, then you can't be normal. And it, the majority of people out there are just reactive. They're just getting by. They are not the CEOs of their life. They mostly work on other people's schedules. It's not normal to say, you know, I'm going to work for 60 minutes and then I'm going to go lay in the sun for 15 minutes because I'm going to recharge. And then you're going to come back in and do a little bit of work maybe. And then I'm going to go for a walk at one in the afternoon. That's not normal, what the normal people do out there, but it's what you do if you're the CEO of your day and you're the, you are the architect of your life, then you do things differently. And if that means that you have to hire a housekeeper, because I know I can tell you, and I, the only place I don't have a housekeeper is on the island, because I don't know who I could get on the island, but I have a housekeeper in Peterborough. I have a housekeeper in Florida. I do not like cleaning houses, but I like a really clean house. So I get somebody to do that. And I've done that from, from the time I lived in a house when I was in my 20s, when we, I moved in with my husband, we had a housekeeper, always. It's not something I like doing, I admit it. If it means you have to order HelloFresh, because that's going to take a few nights of cooking off the table for you, then that's what you need to do. You are the architect of your life. You need to take charge and you need to do it with intention because you've got it written down. You know where you're going. Um, so remember what I said, our diamonds are not happier. They're not smarter. They're not more charming than you are. Um, they're just masters of intentional activity. Masters of intentional activity. They are dedicated to doing their messaging, to doing their three ways, to doing their reach outs, to doing their power hours. They work in defined periods of time, most of the time, or they could be like me and I wasn't in balance. So I do it from morning till night because I also love what I do. So um, it doesn't seem that hard, but I, it's, it's eventually one breaks, uh, does, uh, you know, breaks down doing that much. If you are not clear about why you are doing this, why you want to take it to Ruby, why you want to take it to Senior Ruby, why you want to take it to Emerald, you better sit down and be really serious about figuring that out. It has got to be so strong in you, like it was for me when I wanted my husband to retire in 1999. I don't know why that was the goal. It wasn't his goal at first, but I wanted him retired in 1999. I wanted him retired while our kids were at home. I, I, it was just something that fueled me. Every day, that fueled me more than anything. Um, get really clear on it. Um, so figure that out. And if you, are, if you are sitting here right now and you could not very quickly tell somebody what your goal is, then you don't need that goal replacement surgery right away. You need to throw away what you thought was there before and go, into, and go get some goal replacement surgery. Chat with your support line. Um, talk, chat with your partner, get something really defined on paper. Um, and for those of you that are my yellow people, and you're all the most selfless people out there, um, even you need to have a goal that belongs to you. You need a reason to get up and work when you're tired, to make sure that you're being intentional. When it's time to go do you know, your reach outs, because you haven't reached out to anybody today, and you've made a commitment, you're reaching out to five people a day, and you haven't done it, you need to have a goal that speaks to you. Um, you have to be your priority too. Okay, 8.30, I'm right on time. Because now we're gonna take the next few minutes and we're gonna talk about the next, um, well, the next year is where we're gonna start. So um, it's really important that we work in 90 day runs because that is defined at where you can get your defined activity. It's focused enough. It's where you can create that madness that makes you work. So this is where I'd like you to start. And again, those of you who have this book, the Erin Condren book, it's called The Petite Planner Year in Review. It, this book is broken down. So it starts with you just doing a lot of goal brainstorming, pages of allowing you just to do some brainstorming. That's where you're going to start kind of freely, free flow, just writing down. So I'll share with you a couple of mine. 
I'm going to be vulnerable because you're going to hear some things that you, you can all hold me accountable to. Um, so I wrote, I'm turning 60 this year, June. Guess when I'm turning 60? At convention, during convention, I turned 60. So I'm hoping to be partying with all of you there. Um, my goal is I want to be double diamond by June. I have a diamond emerald position. I'd like to take my emerald position to diamond. One of the things I've learned about myself is, and it's important for us to know about other about our team members, you're either achievement driven or you're prize driven. I'm very much achievement driven. It, I love the prizes. Plexus is so generous with the prizes. Um, and I love that in this last quarter, you know, the Canadians could get 8,000 to sweep up the contest. And I had two positions that did it, which is wonderful. Um, but really it's about the achievement that both my positions did that. Uh, that is what drives me. Financially, obviously going double diamond is a big financial blessing, but I'm not driven, not, I can honestly say now, no, I'm not talking about nine years ago when I started, I was totally financially driven because I was in a financial place I needed to be. Right now, I am totally driven by the achievement of saying that I'd be the only Canadian right now as a double diamond. That is, that is something that drives me, is the achievement. Not the recognition, by the way, that's a different thing. The achievement that I can say that I did this. Um, one of the other things is I want, I love doing family vacations. Those of you who know me know that I love taking my kids on family vacation. I just want to be able to do a fam family vacation whenever I want. If, I, if they are available every year, I want to be able to do that. I have things like I made a commitment. My youngest son in Peterborough bought this big house, is doing a big kitchen renovation. And it was such a pleasure to say, hey, I'd like to buy the appliances for your kitchen when you do this renovation. And I would also like to help my daughter um, with a house. Okay, this is a place I'm being really vulnerable. I want to lose 50 pounds, but 40 of them have to be by the time I turn 60. So 40 pounds by June. I actually have um, 22 weeks to do this. So it's a little less than two pounds a week. Um, so I'm putting that out there. I wrote a goal that we're doing a big renovation on our Florida home here um, this fall. And um, I'm looking forward to getting all new furniture. Uh, so that's written on here. Uh, I've I put a dollar amount of how much I'm increasing my investments by. And I've written down that I'm going to use my calendar for more efficiency to reduce the chaos in my life. So these are the kinds of things you would write. Just start writing things, brainstorming things. And then once you've done all that, now you go to the next section where you start defining those goals. What does that really mean? If I want to go double diamond, okay, well, now I need to go sapphire um, sometime in the, by the end of this quarter, I need to go sapphire. Okay, what am I going to, what does that look like in terms of my weekly and monthly weight loss for that goal? Um, so I'm going to do a little account where I'm going to throw the money in for my son's um, uh, appliances that he's building. So I, did, I start to define that. And, they'll, and put those um, action, those goal action items, um, write them down. Now let's talk about the business though, so for your business. Each of you should have a goal of where you would like your business to be in one year. Okay, that, so you might have an ultimate goal. You wanna go diamond, you know that's your end destination in your mind is diamond, but you work full time and you have kids. So you know that it's not really likely realistic you're gonna do it by December 31st, 2022. So what is your goal of where you want your business to be by the end of December, 2022? If you're really new here, you may have a little bit of trouble figuring that out. And so you may need a coaching call to help figure out what is realistic for you. Your past performance may give some clues about what's realistic for you. Um, maybe not. Maybe you've just not really done the things you're capable of doing. So once you've got your one year goal, so let's just say you're somebody who says, I want to be senior Ruby. You're in this business. You're relatively new. You've got, you know, a small little team of five, six people. Maybe you're a silver, maybe not even senior silver, but your goal is you want to be senior Ruby by the end of 2022. Because you know, if you could earn $50,000 a year, you can give up your job. So it's really clear to you, $50,000 would allow me to make these changes in my life. Well, now we have to break it down by the year. So first of all, you have to know what points it takes, right? It takes 750 plexus points to be a senior Ruby. And that's your goal to be there by the end of the year. Good goal. 
And it's a goal, by the way, anybody who's not even in our business yet or a silver can do. So I'm picking something kind of realistic that everybody can kind of work towards. Um, so now we're going to break it down. So where does it mean I have to be in, a, in the six months goal? Let's move backwards. So somewhere around six months, I, I need to be somewhere around 400 points, you know, 375 to 400 points in my business. Okay, so how many people does that mean I need to have ordering on my team? Well, I'm going to give you um, a figure for those of us that are jewels on here on this call. Cindy would have the same numbers. Arlene would have the same numbers. Leanne, we all have about the same numbers. By the time we get to jewel, we're probably getting, uh, our points are probably averaging about 3.8 points per person. That's where I'm at right now. Cindy might be a little bit higher. Her business is nice and tight. Um, Leanne, I think, runs just around four, just over four. But I'm going to give you a number that's very, um, Senior Ruby, you're definitely going to be averaging about four. But by the time you get to Jewel, you might be averaging about 3.8 because you're going to have business down on your fourth level, your fifth level, your sixth level, your seventh level. Cindy may know her average right now, and I'm sure it's still over four, um, somewhere around four. I, I can tell you that I'm at around 3.8. So if I were to use my numbers right now and I needed to be at 400 points at 3.8, I need about 105 people on my team ordering. Okay. Well, I've got six months to get to that point that I'm going to have about 100 people on my team ordering based on my points. Your points at that point are still quite a bit higher, but on, on my points, I'd have to have about 100 people ordering in six months. Well, now I'm going to break it down to the next, the first three months. Where do I need to be in three months? Well, I need to be at around 200 points in my business in three months. Okay, 300 points means I'm going to have, and honestly, when you're at that first point of 300, you can really count five points because pretty much everything's going to be in your first three levels. Um, so you're going to need about 40 people, 40 average or 40 orders in your organization. Okay, now you've got a very clear picture. By the end of March, I need to have 40 people in my business ordering. So people who do pie in the sky things say, oh, I, I'm going to be Senior Ruby at this point. Some of them will say, I'm going to be Senior Ruby by April. I'm going to be Senior Ruby by May. They have no clue what it takes. So you know, if you want to be Senior Ruby, and you're doing this really part-time, you need to get to about 40 people in the next three months. So what does that look like? Well, you probably wanna start sponsoring as many as you can. Hopefully you can start to sponsor about six a month. That's not somebody who's working this business like Cindy, who's our, one of Canada's top recruiters all the time, eight years into this, or Maura, who's been recruiting like crazy, and Leanne, who's always recruiting like crazy, are big recruiters. Um, people who have big business, big goals, they keep that recruiting high all the time. I would say, Cindy, you got you have gone months and months where you you set a goal. I want 20. Right? Yeah. You do that. You do that quite a bit. People will say, I've run out of people. And all these years later, Cindy, because you keep your funnel filled, because you do your IPAs all the time. Um, you can you can decide this month I'm going to recruit 20, right? Yeah. Um, which is something, by the way, she didn't do in her first couple months. She didn't have the skills then to do it. She stayed plugged in until she learned the skills to make that possible. It isn't about running out of people. It's about developing your skills better. So I would probably be setting a goal to do six. And we know in Plexus, the gold is in silvers. How many silvers can you create? The reason that this team has had so many people earn the business, the silver business trip that Plexus puts on is because we stay focused on creating silvers. Um, so you might set a goal month one, I'm going to recruit six people and I'm going to help one or two of them go silver. I'm going to get really good at getting them to make a post. And I'm going to get good at navigating the comments when people make comments on those posts. And that's what I'm going to focus on is creating silver. Month two, I'm going to go do the same because if I could do the same in month two, I'll probably finish somewhere with 25 to 30 people. If I again recruit six and help create a couple silvers. And then in month three, I'm just going to go do it again. Guess what? I now have more than 40 people. I've reached my goal, but I now have more people to work with. So now to take my business from the 200 to another 203 months, I have a lot more people to work with. My job is actually getting a little bit easier. If I'm doing this right, my job is getting a little easier. And heck, I might finish at the end of six months 
not just with 400 points, I might be at 500 points. I might be able to start moving my senior Ruby goal up a little bit because I've been really dedicated to my activities. So what are the questions that we need to ask ourselves as we assess our activity? And that is, we have to ask how many partners, business partners do we have on the team right now that are committed to building their business? Who wants to go silver? Who wants to go senior silver? Who's working to gold? You should have that really clearly mapped out. I can tell you the leaders on here know every month, Cindy does her coaching calls with all her level ones. They're all done by the end of the first week. Those that are serious about building their business, they're booking coaching calls with her. That's a priority. And Cindy, by the end of the first week, I can talk to Cindy and I know exactly how many people are going for what, where in her team. So she's got clear defined vision of what that month looks like. What are their goals? We want to know that. Um, I'd be asking questions like, how many of my level ones are making posts on Facebook right now? How many are extending their network um, right now? How many people are people adding to their network? But a question always is, how many three ways do I have going on? How many three ways are in my calendar for this next week? Because the number of three ways you have is a really good indication of the growth you're likely going to have this week. And remember, the three ways are important because in all likelihood, you can cast vision better than they can in the beginning. Because that's a skill. It takes, it takes time to learn how to do that stuff, how to subtly help create some vision for somebody who's not even looking at the business. But we know how to you know, get them thinking about that a little bit. So your goals right now is to be, I want you to take the time and, and look at what your goals are in life, in all those areas, family and relationships and your health and your finances. Take time to do that. It's a really interesting um, process to do it. When it comes, and then get have enough goals in there that it fuels that madness that gets you wanting to work. Those goals that you have for six months from now and a year from now and three months from now, put some rewards in place for those goals. And I'll tell you, I set this 40 pound weight loss goal by June. If I say it long enough and out to enough people, I'm probably got to make it happen or I'm going to be really embarrassed. But this 40 pound goal before I turned 60. Um, so I asked two of my closest friends if uh, they could be part of my, my reward to myself. Would they come to Toronto with me? And these are two friends who have great fashion. They're the friends who say to you, oh, that doesn't look good. Or you should not be wearing that. And so I asked them if they would come with me to Toronto, my treat, dinner, hotel. Um, I want to get a new wardrobe and I want them to be with me um, as, I, as I do my shopping. So I've written them into my reward for losing 40 pounds. And they already know it, that they're going to be doing that. They've already been calling me. So tell me what you weighed today. What did you do today towards your goal? Um, so take some time to really intentionally sit and, and write your goals. I'm going to tell you what my husband and I used to do all the time. And that is at the beginning of the year, we would go sit at a hotel. Um, we were, you know, we were snowbirds. So we would be down south and uh, we'd go to a really nice hotel in Miami and Orlando. You know, we're like the Gaylord where it's beautiful sit there and order a cup of tea or a glass of wine, depending on the time of day. And we would just chat. What are our goals? Jim and I are doing that in a little bit of a different way because it's a different relationship when you're in a, a new, real, you know, in a relationship that you start in your 50s. It's a little different, but we're doing that too. What are our goals? Where do we want to go? What do we want to see? We, we contracted with each other, our travel plans for the year. Um, and just spend that time to write it down and get really clear and put dates to them. Put dates, have your long-term ones, have your shorter term ones, um, and then break it down in quarters and then have a coaching call with your mentor. Make sure it's reasonable Ask, because they have experience. They've already done it. So talk to them about what that really looks like for you doing that, because you might have a goal that feels realistic to you because you haven't done it. You don't have the same perspective that that's probably not enough enrollments or that's not enough people going for silver or that's not enough three ways. Here's another thing. The more people, it's a stat, it's the truth. The more people you have, more butts you have in chairs at convention, the, more, the likelier you have a big business the next six to 12 months. You should be working really hard to get people committed to have their butts in chairs at convention in June. We don't say that lightly. We know it's a big commitment but it's critical for your success um, to have people there, to have people at events. The more people that show up on VSSs, that show up on IP, doing our power hour, 
the more people that you have doing those things, the better, the bigger your business is going to be. Break it down in quarters, identify the activities, what you're going to do each month and have, that's what's really good about this book that not, I'm not doing this in my planner in this book is where I'm, I'm writing down my activities, but I'm also writing down. So one of the things I've decided to do, I want to do two cards a week because one of my goals is I want to do some really healthy relationship building inside my organization. So every week I'm going to be sending out two cards to people in my group for different, they might not be recruiting. They may just be a long time customer. They may be doing really well. I just want to acknowledge them because I look and appreciate them, but I don't necessarily do anything about it. And they don't know that I'm appreciating them. So in this book, I'm going to write each week the two names who's, who, who I will be sending cards out to. I'm going to be writing my weight down here. I'm going to be writing my um, exercise after it's accomplished. I want a diary of that stuff. So this book is going to be my goal um, um, achievement diary. It's going to be where I put everything based on the goals that I've set for my quarterly, you know, reaching Sapphire in my second position, um, by the end of the first quarter. So I can hit diamond in that position. I'm going to be monitoring and I've got my people, my new level ones that I have sort of I outlined goals of where I think they're going to be. I still have to contract with them, but I've written down where I want Lee and where I want Mora and where I want my people in, in three months. I've got their goals. I just got to wait to see if it matches their goals. Um, I've got my weight loss. I've broken it down by the month. I've get, done some of my financial stuff and it's by the month and it's in here. And it's written so I can be looking at it. Oh, I went five minutes longer than I wanted to go. Um, I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>